How could a new deck require an electrical service panel upgrade? Well, if you go into any large home improvement store, especially around spring, you're likely to see an army of shiny new barbecue grills lined up to meet you. Most of these come included with rotisseries and even refrigerators. The concern is the extension cords that might get used to power them or other devices on our decks that we need electricity for. Extension cords get stepped on, rolled over, pinched, and they become an electrical hazard. Beyond that, they provide other hazards as well. In this example, an extension cord is used to run some heat tape to this water line in a mechanical room. But being tripped on by an occupant and pulled across this gas valve, you can see the extension cord halfway shut off the gas to a large boiler. For decks, this is a common sight. We all do this usually once a year, or many of us. This is an acceptable use for extension cords, temporary. But many of us also leave these cords and lights, be it rope lights or Christmas lights, out on our deck year round. We want to avoid the extension cords. So in 2009, the International Residential Code added a requirement that there be one receptacle outlet within the perimeter of decks, balconies, and porches. Let's look at this example. This is a home, a new home, and it's built by a builder that provided a master bedroom door out to a small balcony, a door off of the kitchen to a small deck. And as required for many decades in the National Electric Code, he provided a receptacle outlet at the rear of the home because the home has access to grade. But it's not likely that these two decks were provided a receptacle outlet, as it wouldn't have been previously required. These decks are also looking pretty possible for being replaced with new outdoor living environments, and that's going to cause the need for an electrical permit. Now for decks like this, it's not time to get out the digger and worry about an underground feeder to an electrical outlet, because it's only required when the deck, porch, or patio is accessible directly from the house. There's no electrical requirement on a deck like this. For a deck like this, however, we have to start questioning the requirement that it's only necessary on decks that have greater than 20 square feet of usable area. Usable does not have a consistent definition, so in looking at this deck up here, it is larger than 20 square feet, but will it be considered usable? This will be the interpretation of the local building department. For a deck like this, however, it's very small, and we're clearly not 20 square feet. This deck would not require a receptacle outlet. Let's look at another example. In this situation, there's a concrete patio here that was put in when the home was built, and it's accessed directly from a door from the home. There was already a receptacle outlet located here. The deck that was built is not accessed directly from the home, and thus should not require the receptacle outlet. However, should a door be added at this location and the deck have direct access from the home, it could be argued that this deck portion would be required to have a receptacle outlet. However, what would not be expected would be three separate outlets. Though we're on three different levels here, even a fourth if you consider the patio, this is considered and intended to be one deck because it's at one floor level of the home. It would be a little inappropriate in my interpretation to require three receptacle outlets and classify these as three separate decks due to the change in elevation. Let's look at the receptacle outlet itself because there's quite a lot involved with the receptacle outlets installation. First, it's likely going to need to be a wet use rated outlet. It's likely going to need an in use cover. It will require GFCI protection it will be required to be tamper resistant and the circuit may require arc fault protection depending on how the wiring is done. It'd be wise at this point to utilize a licensed electrician to perform this work. We'd like to avoid a wet use cover in installation like this and let's prefer a more professional installation such as this. Now I mentioned at the beginning of this video how we could go from building a new deck to requiring a new electrical panel. Let's look at that possibility. 
Imagine a new deck is built. Perhaps that builder home I showed earlier gets a nice upgrade. Two new receptacle outlets would need to be required. A receptacle outlet that's added to a circuit is considered an extension of that circuit. Extending a circuit kicks in a requirement for arc fault protection, depending on what circuit is extended. In many older homes, the old panels cannot fit the new arc fault breakers. This panel, for example, is one that would have to be replaced should the need for a receptacle outlet on a deck cause arc fault protection requirements to kick in. There's no arc fault devices to fit a panel of this age. Let's go back to that original deck we looked at, the one that did not require the receptacle. And let's zoom in a little bit closer. We see it's very small and there's little wall space to even provide a receptacle. This is truly being used to exit this upper dwelling and get down to grade. However, in the 2012 IRC, the 20 square foot threshold was removed and all decks, porches, and patios, regardless of size, require a receptacle outlet under the 2012 IRC. Let's look at the final notes from this video. A receptacle is required for decks, porches, and patios but only if it's 20 square feet or more than 20 square feet of usable space. And of course that goes away in 2012. The deck, porch, or patio must be accessible directly from the dwelling for this requirement to kick in. And there's lots of requirements for the receptacle itself that cannot be overlooked. Multi-level decks on the same floor level are intended to be considered as one deck and one receptacle. For code administrators, I give you the advice that you should start asking about receptacles during the plan review stage. For contractors, it's important to analyze the need for receptacles during the design and bid process. Take my word for it, an unplanned required receptacle outlet at the time of completion of the job can become quite a mess. My name is Glenn Mathewson, and I thank you for learning with me today.